Okay, so occasionally I have older videos that I haven't put up yet. And one I made a few months ago in California that I've never put up because I wasn't able to, well, there's a lot of wind because it was in the desert. It's a visit to the Joshua Tree from the back cover of the U2 album, Joshua Tree. But I filmed so much and it's such good footage and going out there is a, a pilgrimage for me every time I go. But I think I've been out there three times. So I'm going to show you that footage now. But I chose a very specific spot to introduce this video. I may have introduced it on the other, the old footage. I can't remember. We're going to find out together. It's added. I don't know what music I'm going to use or if I'm going to put music at all. How I'm going to do it, you're going to see. But I chose this place where I am to, to introduce the video. And when we come back, you're going to find out why I chose this place. Where am I? You're going to find out after you watch my trip to the actual Joshua Tree. Way up in Death Valley. I'm south of there right now. And it's cold. Why am I here though at this place? What does it have to do with you two? Well, me, you, two, we will find out together. Watch this video. See you in a minute. Or a few minutes. <laughs> I know you're gonna dig this. So I'm gonna have to do a voiceover for a lot of this because it's very, very windy out in the desert. Now this is a giant wooden cross. It's a grave for two children that died from a plague in 1874. The children are Lorenza and Larkin McKellips. Their parents ran a stagecoach stopover not too far from where the Joshua Tree is. So they buried the, the kids here and the graves remained neglected until 1947 when a local miner named Bill James discovered the graves. He carved a new wooden marker for them and throughout the 1950s, James and other locals maintained the graves. In 1959, when Route 190, the route that I'm on, was scheduled for realignment, locals requested that the Division of Highways don't disturb the graves. So to the road crew, uh, put that large wooden cross up and they established that there should be a painting of the cross every now and again and rocks and markers left for the children there. Death Valley, the real Joshua tree is that way. I've been here before, but I filmed it the wrong way. So I wanted to come back and document it again and I'll see if anybody ruined it. Because I hate people like that. It's cold and I'm only wearing shorts, but I'm Canadian. I bleed blue and white. Red and white is a flag, but blue and white is maple leaves. Let's go find the Joshua Tree. So this location in Death Valley is about three and a half hours north of central Los Angeles, where I stay. So it's a bit of a trek to get out there. It's tough. I was out there the first time in 2012, and my friend and I went out there without GPS coordinates to, to find the tree. We knew roughly where it was, and we were going by the mountain range, and we had a good idea from online things. You could find it now really easily because of GPS coordinates online, but we went out there searching for it. And when you find it, as a YouTube fan, it's euphoric. It's amazing. It's incredible to see. Walking, 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 squinting, and walking. Look at this desert ground. Usually it's stifling hot in the desert, but it was cold that day. But you see all those plants right there, there, there. They have those little like burrs or whatever the heck they're called. When they get stuck in your shoe and you walk, it's uncomfortable. I keep forgetting to press record. What kind of videographer does press record? It's really windy. Hope you can hear me well. <sighs> Getting close. There's a tree right in front of me. Get close. Closer. You know. 
know you're close with those bottles of Guinness. That's right. So U2's Joshua Tree was released in 1987 and it's known as one of the greatest rock albums of all time. Before it's release, U2's photographer Anton Corbain wanted to take them out to the desert into Joshua Tree National Park, Death Valley, and take photos for the album cover. Now the front of the album is actually Zabriskie Point, which is another place in Death Valley. This is the back of the album cover where they're standing beside one lone Joshua Tree, which they pass by. And Anton Corbain, the photographer, thought that's perfect. He didn't want them standing beside a, a cluster of trees. He wanted the image, the stark image of them beside one lone tree. That says Pride right there, which is the name of a U2 song from a different album. The album beforehand, Unforgettable Fire. Now, here we go. This is more like a director's commentary of a DVD. As you can see, people come and they leave stuff all over. Now, here I am lining up the tree with the mountain range in the back just to double check to make sure that, uh, well, I knew I was here, but I just do it every time. I just like looking at it and seeing the mountain range in the back. It's really just, it's so cool to see it. And so you kind of see right there, the mountain range in the background, how it matches up to the one lone tree. And it's a pilgrimage for people to come out here. U2 fans from all over the world. You can see the different flags. There's a suitcase there with U2 on it. Guitars. Everything. Now, this is really cool. This is a cement marker that somebody hauled all the way out there. It says, have you found what you're looking for on it? Which is a play on, I still haven't found what I'm looking for, a U2 song. I still haven't found what I'm looking for is one of the greatest songs on the album. I didn't realize, though, when I was a kid, when this album came out, I was really young. And all I knew were the hits on side A. Some, pe some people leave bones out there. The weird stuff. A symbol, Larry Mullinger. I listened to side A of the album. And then my friend said, what about the other side? I was like, what are you talking about? He said, you know, there's songs on the other side. And I knew there were, but I didn't think that they were. I just thought the hits. And it was the first album that I flipped over. And I listened to the other side and I was blown away. Because the tracks on the other side are just as good as the hits. So it really... For me as an audiophile, somebody who loves music, this album solidified my love my my love of my love of YouTube, but my love of music because I didn't realize you could you could flip an album over and there's just as good as songs on the other side. I was a stupid kid. Now, here, more of the tree. It's sad seeing it falling down, but it's also not because it's it's still there. There's the famous mountain ridge behind me, I'm gonna show you. And here's the tree. Glad I came back out here. So if you want to come out here, play the guitar. It's missing a string. It's out of tune. You put the guitar back. You need everything the way you found it. People come out here and leave stuff. Don't take it. But I'm taking this bone. Because I got a bone to pick. I'm not taking the bone. Leave it all here. Leave all that you can't, all that you can't leave, leave, all that you can't leave behind, just don't leave, leave it behind, leave it behind. So I've watched videos of other people that have been out here to the Joshua Tree, and one of them I saw where people threw those guitars, they, they don't show it on camera, but somebody, they showed the guitars up in that tree, which is nearby, and that really annoyed me. And thankfully, some nice soul came and put them back rightfully where they belong. Who would throw those guitars up in that tree? Psychopaths. And then I believe I started looking at the footprints around there and started matching them up with my own. And I was making a weird joke saying, oh, someone else was wearing Adidas size 13. And it was me. It was a lame joke. I'm glad I'm doing a voiceover now. Didn't work. If you're going to make the drive out to Death Valley to see the tree, I strongly suggest listening to the album, The Joshua Tree. I would be playing it right now in the background the whole time for this video, but of course copyright issues do not allow me to do that. My friend's recording me as I'm walking around the desert. I was looking for something. I can't remember what it was I was looking for, and then we decided just to keep filming. And then I wanted to touch this tree, and you're going to see this reaction, and that's real. It hurts. And I always do that. I always touch these Joshua trees, these baby ones, the big ones, whatever ones. I always touch them. Like I said, I'm not smart. So, and they always hurt. I don't know why I don't learn my lesson. Yeah, so my friend just kept recording me as I'm walking around the desert. I thought that was kind of cool. I was having fun. We both were. Then we sped it up 
I was doing like little film tests and stuff and just having fun with the camera. I was using a different camera. This hoodie makes me look pregnant. Oh well. If I have a baby, I'm gonna name it Marshall or Bono. I guess Bono would be appropriate since I'm out here. But I'm wearing the hoodie, so Marshall would be more appropriate. Anyways, later. Word. Where's my car? Ah, <sighs> boy. You're just a little baby, Joshua Tree. You haven't even started your life yet. The other one's dead, and you're just starting. And the crap all in my shoe. Oh my god, it hurts me to walk. Frick! So here I am, I'm experimenting with a new camera, like I said, so I was ready with it, and then I got tired really fast because it was a long walk in to find the Joshua Tree. But the camera looked pretty cool, and I love that mountain range. All right, look at that sun behind me. Back at the car. That's it for the Death Valley part one, of course. I got more of Death Valley to show you right now. If I make it, I gotta drive like an Uber. Driver one in a five-star rating. That's how fast I'm gonna drive. Look at these roads. Nothing out here. Nothing. Where the streets definitely have no name. Going deep into Death Valley, I'm gonna get some cool video of the cliffs and the mountains that are all around, but I'm going up, up, up into the mountains of Death Valley. Who's pointing? Who's that pointing at me? Wait until you see this view that I am about to show you. Will it translate well? I don't know. Will it show what I see? I don't know. But I'm still gonna show it to you. And for people who are getting sick of my face, sorry. It's the only one I got. That. This is Father Crowley. Would you like to know who Father Crowley was? So would I. Let's go find out. Padre Crowley Point. The Padre that from the snowy heights of the Sierras beyond the deep shadow of Death Valley, beloved and trusted by people of all faiths, he led them toward life's wide horizons. He passed this way. So I'm going right to the edge here. Holy jeez. This is what you call a treacherous little cliff. You see down in there? You do not want to be down in there. Especially at nighttime. It'd be very cold and there's probably a couple of coyotes, like ragged coyotes. But it's cold right now as the sun is going down. In the summer, it's still hot. Like in August, July, it's really hot. Right now, it's, the sun is going down. It's getting colder and colder. See the ridges behind me and the valley. Is that the actual Death Valley? If you fall down there, yeah. Yeah, it is. I'd like to find more to show you in Death Valley, but it's getting cold. And the sun is going down but I'm gonna find more there's no wind right now so you can actually hear me speaking but now I have nothing to say good lord I'm gonna sue that rock a few other people out here not many Try to get those mountains off to the right. It is insane. In the membrane. Look down there. Look at those things. This is some crazy, crazy driving. I don't know what to quite compare it to, but no, there's nothing, there's nothing that compares to this. Look at the mountain in front of me. Oh my lord. You don't see these in Canada. Well, you do in BC, but you're not in Ontario where I'm from. That's so why I enjoy coming out here all the time. Didn't grow up with this. Beautiful. 
Oh, all right, we got it. We're good for now. A little general store in Death Valley that I always stop at. And I'm always looking for a badge to match the badge that I bought years ago here. And the guy said, oh, yeah, we sold out of those a while ago. We just told just now. I said, oh, that sucks. He goes, yeah, yesterday around four. That's a while ago. A while ago would mean like two years ago. And I was here last year, and they didn't have them. I keep missing them by a day. What's that over there? I don't know what's going on over there. Hmm. I'm gonna see what else I can show you in Death Valley, but it's getting dark. Looks bright, but getting dark. Looks bright, getting dark. Looks bright, getting dark. Sorry. Looks bright, getting dark. Looks bright, getting dark. Looks bright. It's getting dark. Looks bright. It's getting dark. And there's where Death Valley ends. I was all over the place. But that's where it ends. Leaving Death Valley in the dark. Leaving it behind. These mountains are huge. If I drive off to the right, it's just the abyss. But I got this. All right, what'd you think? Not bad, huh? Pretty cool going out there. So why am I here? Well, when you two were doing a photo shoot for promotional uh, purposes for the album, they drove all through the desert and they stopped here at this little motel and they took pictures here. Right in front of this sign at the Harmony Motel. That's right, Bono, The Edge, Adam Clayton, Larry Mullen Jr. are right here in front of this sign, right where I'm standing right now. That's where they were. Come on! Do I see any Joshua trees around? Well, I have my sunglasses on at dusk. Why? I don't know. Why do you have your sunglasses on right now? Answer that! Well, I hope you liked that video. But look at that, Harmony Motel. Right here. Cool little place, come stay here. I'm not because I'm going somewhere else. I'm going far, far. I got a long drive ahead of me. And guess what I'm going to be listening to? You too. It's a you too kind of day. They stood right here. Is Josh Watch read their best album? Or is Act Tongue Baby? Or is All That You Can't Leave Behind? Or is Songs of Experience, which I love as well? I don't know. Love them all. Best band ever. Okay. Harmony Motel. I'm saying peace out. That looks like a shave down Joshua tree. I don't know if it is. Do they do that? Do they shave down tr Joshua trees? It's a loud little thoroughfare. This is 29 Palms. Ooh, take a look at this before we go. Hello. You're a big horn sheep, aren't you? Because there's a lot of you around here, but real ones. You're fake. You're a fake and a phony, and I wish I never laid eyes on you. What movie's that from? Grace. Hi. I'm out. Peace out.